A new study has revealed 56% of children under the age of 12 had COVID-19 in Gauteng between October and December 2021. It also reveals that many people had already had COVID before the Omicron variant was first detected. Widespread immunity induced by past infection and vaccines generally offered good protection against severe COVID-19 disease, hospitalization and death. At least a third of the population has been vaccinated. South Africa has seen a major decline in severe infection during the fourth wave compared to earlier waves. Professor Shabir Mahdi is one of South Africa's leading virologists. He co-authored this new study on population immunity and COVID-19 severity with the Omicron variant in South Africa to discuss their findings. He joins us live now. Professor, thank you so much for your time as always. Apart from what I've mentioned in my introduction, what were the other notable findings of this study? Uh, good morning and thank you for having me. So the most notable finding was that we've seen a tremendous decoupling of uh, the force of infection with the virus and what materializes as hospitalization and death. So basically, unlike uh, during the course of the Delta variant wave, which was the third wave in South Africa that contributed to over 40% of all hospitalization and close on to 50% of all of the deaths which has transpired since the start of the pandemic, during the course of the Omicron wave, uh, all likelihood as many as 40% of South Africans were infected in this wave alone. But the Omicron wave has already contributed to about 3% of all of the deaths which has transpired from COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic. So people are getting infected, but these infections are no longer materializing into large numbers of hospitalization and death, which really tells us that we need to re start rethinking how we approach the pandemic and how we think of the virus itself. All right. So using these findings, how would we then recalibrate our response? To the pandemic so for all intents and purposes we need to start uh, managing COVID-19 similar to how we manage uh, many of the other seasonal uh, viruses that do appear in South Africa such as seasonal influenza and we're now able to do that not because the virus is any less severe but rather because there's extensive amount of immunity which has arisen across the population and particularly including people above the age of 50 who fortunately more than 60% of them have been vaccinated, coupled with 70% of them also having been infected with the virus. And that combination of events has resulted in substantial amount of protection across the country and across all age groups against severe disease and death. So yes, COVID-19 is still in our midst. We need to learn to live with it, uh, but uh, we can tailor our management of the, of the virus now. Having said that, the high levels of immunity and also with other pharmaceutical interventions like the COVID-19 pill, do vaccines still have an important role to play? Uh, absolutely. And particularly in people above the age of 50, uh, we still need to get vaccine, uh, back to vaccine coverage in that age group above 90 percent, because what the science shows is that this combination of immunity that's induced both by vaccines as well as by infection, that immunity, in fact, confers greater protection than when immunity is only induced by vaccines or by infection. So this combination of events of infection as well as vaccines and inadvertently a large percentage of the population have been infected uh, now and probably closer to 80 to 85 percent have now been infected after Omicron. But that combination of uh, sort of uh, co combination of vaccine and infection it results in a very different type of immune response, which provides heightened protection, not only against severe disease, but also against mild infection. But again, the main focus needs to be people above the age of 50. And once we've got more than 90% of that group uh, of vaccinated, then we can continue our efforts in the other age groups as well. Are you afraid that the results of this study might lead to more vaccine hesitancy? Uh, not at all. Like I said, vaccines still got an important role to play. And especially if you want future resurgences to be of a lower magnitude, and if you're wanting to further decrease the number of people that end up in hospital and decrease the number of people that die. Uh, so vaccines are still an extremely important tool in our momentum moving forward. And in fact, we need better vaccines. Uh, we need vaccines that are a bit more resilient uh, when there are mutations of the virus, uh, such as uh, that occurred with Omicron, where the vaccines didn't protect too well against, against infection and mild disease, but still uh, stood steadfast when it came to protecting against severe disease. 
So by no means uh, does this indicate that we need to loosen our grip on trying to get as many people vaccinated as possible. But again, the priority to focus on is people above the age of 50 get 90% or more of them vaccinated before the next resurgence take place. So essentially, it's, it's, fo it's switching focus from a percentage of the population to a percentage of a part of the population. Uh, correctly. When government was talking about getting 70% of the population vaccinated by the end of 2021, which it was never going to achieve, inadvertently we've resolved we've in a situation now where probably 80% of South Africans have developed immunity, not by vaccines, but rather because of infection. But that infection-induced immunity has come at massive cost of loss of life. Close on to 300,000 people have died of COVID-19 in South Africa because of the natural infections that transpired since the start of the pandemic. Uh, very quickly, Professor, you mentioned the need for better vaccines. What's the progress in that regard? So there's some uh, optimism that we are making headway, and certainly probably during the course of this year, we'll have different constructs of vaccines, uh, where in addition to what is referred to as a spike protein, which forms a backbone of many vaccines, there will be other components of the virus that will be included in these vaccines that will probably induce a heightened immune response and be more resilient when it comes to protecting against mutations uh, that occur in the virus. So I'm optimistic that during the course of 2022, we will see a second generation of vaccine come on board. And in fact, in South Africa, we're already evaluating uh, those vaccines. Professor, thank you for your time and thank you for all of the hard work you've done during the course of this pandemic. We appreciate it.